We've just concluded looking at a number of painters and sculptors who are engaged in extraordinarily abstract work. And I imagine some of you have looked at that work and thought, oh no, is naturalism dead? We'll take hope because in America we have a continuous tradition of naturalism uh, that I think will probably never go away. So I offer you as consolation uh, Jamie Wyeth, who was born in 1946, he's continuing to work today, he's alive and well, and still painting. He's the son of Andrew Wyeth, and that is a portrait of Andrew up in the, the top uh, right hand, excuse me, top left hand corner. And the grandson of N.C. Wyeth, who is depicted, that's a self-portrait by him, uh, in the uh, lower left corner of the composition. Uh, he works and lives then in what's referred to as the Brandywine River tr tradition. Um, of uh, <clears throat> fairly concrete, naturalistic, and convincing forms. Uh, the tradition in the United States, which was so important in art and its foundation, for an appreciation of craftsmanship continues in the line of the Wyeths. And I think it deserves the title of American realism. Uh, this is a portrait of Jamie who's still working out of Chadsford and at another portion of the year out of the uh, area of Maine uh, as his father did before him. I've picked Jamie because I think he's a little more challenging to understand and I think he's also cool. So let's take a look at <clears throat> one of Jamie Wyeth's animal portraits and he did a number of images of animals as well as birds and all I can tell you is move over Rosa Bonner because uh, Jamie doesn't mean pig. Uh, he treats the canvas uh, regally by showing us an accurate depiction of pig uh, along with I think the personality of pig and this particular canvas is over seven feet in length so we have a very large picture. Uh, the pig appears to have just been groomed and to have finished off pig's corn so that pig seems to be smiling a happy smile of contentment. Uh, we also get a sense of texture that is pretty impressive. Let's take a look at the detail of pig. Okay, there you go. There is um, a lot of paint on the surface in impasto work that stands on the surface that conveys the sense of hair on the body of pig. Uh, we also get the sense that pig has just been bathed and consequently uh, the pink body of our creature underneath is highly visible. Uh, it is a picture that gives pig a kind of grandeur. Uh, pig is parallel to the surface of the picture plane and that tends to make pig monumental. Uh, totally a pig, totally at home, and totally at peace with the world. Uh, there is a scale shot, bet you missed those, uh, that would be lower right. That's me standing next to pig uh, just to let you know how really large in scale pig is and I am talking about the painting. Uh, these are two more pictures um, by uh, Jamie uh, that are created of animals. I believe we looked at at least one, maybe both of them, at the beginning of the semester in terms of texture. Uh, Jamie Wyeth uh, works in both watercolor uh, and also in oil. Uh, his uh, famous father, Andrew, tends to favor tempera uh, as a, a medium. Uh, both of these are pretty good uh, depictions of animals, but I would like to suggest that <clears throat> they're more uh, than mere naturalistic portrayals or convincing and accurate portrayals of animals. Um, the Wyeth family, not just Jamie, but also his father and also his grandfather, uh, consistently reveal in their art an element of fantasy and I do think it comes out of the work of the grandfather who was a famous illustrator. He was a specifically an illustrator of books for children so he worked with a lot of uh, narratives and a lot of historical tales and a lot of fantastic tales. Uh, the studio and the house tended to be filled with props 
from distant times and places, and both Andrew and Jamie seem to have absorbed this element of fantasy into their own work. Uh, in the top image, this is called Islander, and I would like you to be thinking of this in terms of rather a fantastic image of an animal, perhaps with a touch of what we might otherwise refer to as surrealism. Uh, it has a kind of mystical quality. It's located uh, high above a clear lucid space as it looks like in surrealist paintings as it seems to look into uh, the distance with a sense of hyper realism and as if it's gaining awareness or knowledge beyond what we can see with the senses I also get the feeling that in fact the animal knows the truth whereas we the viewer do not completely understand it it's also a triumph of texture in painting, giving us the kind of wet and matted uh, coat that an animal in the wild would actually uh, convey. Uh, the image below, which is a sheep, and the title of this is Lady, uh, the sheep looks directly at us, and it has a kind of mystical, otherworldly expression in its eyes as it stares us down. Okay, all of this, I think, is due to the very strong and striking influence of N.C. Wyeth, and I just throw in one N.C. Wyeth picture up above in the right corner. Uh, this is his personification of winter, a human being representing the month of winter. And it looks like this mythical, wise old man figure kind of coming out of a circle of light. Uh, this backdrop of fantasy does continue to run through and flavor uh, the world of Jamie Wyeth as well as it did the world of his father. Uh, Jamie Wyeth is also a painter, I think, who is enduring, endearing and enduring, uh, but particularly enduring because he is also capable of adding in an element of humor to his compositions, a kind of charming or witting, witty quality. Uh, the image upper right is a couple chickens who are nesting, and the title of this, I think, is 10W30, which is a motor oil. Uh, it is a motor oil box from Sears. Uh, our chickens don't seem to care about labels. They've just plopped into a good, comfy place. Uh, perhaps I could say something less convincing uh, about the image lower left, which has a duck uh, in a cooking pot. So you do have to ask yourself if this is a very smart duck. It does suggest that the, in this case, the birds are uh, seeking any comfortable place to roost and they're doing so without an understanding of words or labels which humans might attach to these objects. An element of humor then that I think is a part of the world of Jamie Wyeth. Okay, he was also an incredible portraitist. This is his uh, image done, the one far right, complete image, uh, done uh, in 1977 of Nureyev. Uh, Nureyev was a great Russian uh, ballet dancer. And this is a piece that Jamie created based upon very academic traditions, lots of studies of Nureyev, including uh, the, the first series of studies based upon the face of Nureyev. Nureyev did, um, after a while, agree to sit for Jamie Wyeth, but Nureyev, the great dancer, didn't have time to allow Wyeth to do the full study of his full figure. The face, yes, but not the body. So Jamie Wyeth, initially at least, filled that in with sketches of uh, ballet students, male student dancers. When Nuria found this out and got a view of those sketches, he was appalled because he didn't think the bodies of the student dancers were as magnificent as his own. So it was at that point that he did indeed agree to sit for a longer period of time for Jamie Wyeth. And I think Jamie Wyeth got to know Nuria fairly well. Uh, this is a composition, the finished one on the right, um, against the bar that a ballet dancer would use. It is an asymmetrical composition. His arms akimbo, meaning on his hips, and he's wearing this magnificent fur coat. Uh, his hair is shaggy, and overall, as we examine him, we get the sense of his beautiful physique, his great energy, his great strength, and I'm going to call it also a kind of animal nature uh, or power uh, that is associated with Nureyev the person and Nureyev the dancer. Uh, it is a pretty darn good portrait. Uh, Nureyev, in fact, was a great dancer 
And if we were in the classroom, I'd ask you, does he know that? I think that the answer is absolutely. And Jamie Wyeth has captured in this painting uh, the confidence, maybe tinging on arrogance, that can be easily associated with this ballet star. Okay. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, Jamie Wyeth and Andy Warhol uh, did a face-off. I think it was a friendly face-off, and I think the two of them uh, ended up gaining respect for each other and an understanding um, on the part of Warhol of uh, an appreciation for the tradition that Wyeth was carrying on and for Wyeth, perhaps, an understanding of the modernism that was part of the world of Andy Warhol. The image on the left is Warhol's rendition in his photographically real, his litho style, essentially, uh, based upon a photo of Jamie Wyeth. And on the right is Jamie's meticulously painted academic style piece of Andrew, or excuse me, Andy Warhol uh, with his pet dog. Uh, I would uh, like you to see this because... I am hopeful that you will get to go to the Brandywine River Museum where you can see this, which is really very cool. Uh, this is a piece that was uh, more recently done by uh, Jamie Wyeth, and it is Andy Warhol behind a screen door, and I think he's also holding his little pooch. Uh, this is an image that is a really good portrait capturing the essence, the appearance of Andy Warhol, but by placing him behind the screen door, which is red, white, and blue, and referencing Americana and American pop as well. Uh, it's also a reference, I think, uh, as if to document the private side of Warhol. Uh, Andy Warhol, despite the fact that he was constantly in the public eye, uh, never really revealed anything about himself. So I think what is so captivating about this portrait is that it literally provides a screen between the viewer and the subject, uh, suggesting that Jamie Wyeth can, um, while maintaining the tradition of realism in America, also open up to many of its modern voices.